Hey Brahmas, in this video I'm going to cover how to find our databases and an introduction to OneSearch. Let's begin in the library's homepage. On the left hand side there's a tab that reads databases A-Z. So if you open that up it shows you the full list of all of our databases which you can always open and use yourself. You do have to click on them from the library's website and it's going to ask you for your student ID number as the username and the passcode is your month and date of birth. Four digits, a two digit month and a two digit date of birth. No year, however. Now, OneSearch, as if you recall, is supposed to look through all of these databases at the same time, 60 something databases or maybe less than that. And what I'm covering today is OneSearch, yes, but also if you were to click on eBooks under database types, we do have a few databases that specialize on digital books. And the ones that might help you the most are EBSCO eBooks, eBook Central, and Gale eBooks. I'm going to show you Gale eBooks because they do have this one great publication that I love. So in Gale eBooks, I'm, I just typed in cold blood in quotation marks to keep that as one phrase. And there's a publication titled Nonfiction Classics for Students. And if you click on the title in cold blood, it opens up this article or this chapter in that publication, which is basically an academic version of Spark Notes if you ever use that. But the great thing about this article is that you can quickly go to the themes of that book and learn about, you know, the literary concepts that there, this book is tackling. And even here, right here, topics for further study. It helped me remember, because I haven't read In Cold Blood since high school, that there is this question about the death penalty and how it should be applied under the law and who qualifies as mentally ill or insane. So by looking at this type of source, which gives you an overview of the novel, it can help you brainstorm and focus your angle for your research question and the topics that you want to explore in your research. Now, most of our databases have a function in which you can view the citation of that source. In this database, Gale eBooks, there is that button cite, and by default, it shows me the MLA 8th style. So even though these citations are not 100% correct, they're a great way to begin, and we should always double check them. And just remember that for any source that you use, you do have to cite it in your works cited page. So the way I see it, the databases help you in your research because you can easily email yourself a link to whatever useful sources you might find and our databases should include the citation or at least a link to come back to the database at which point you can easily get the citation for that source. Let's go back to the library's website. In our homepage you will see OneSearch and in that little search bar we're going to start with simple keywords like the title of our text and the author's last name. After clicking on search, OneSearch is looking across most of our databases at the same time and therefore it's going to give you various results such as ebooks, academic journals, newspapers, etc. Now, before we start looking at the 3000 results, which OneSearch usually gives you an overwhelming amount of results unless you put very specific keywords. But on the left-hand side of OneSearch, there are some tools that you can use to filter these sources. And I wanna show you under resource types, you can see that there is a filter for journals. But if you are looking for academic journals, that is, articles that come from peer-reviewed journals, you do want to click on the scholarly journals 
as opposed to the just journals filter. And if you just wanted to look for ebooks, you would click on the filter for books, but you would also then click on the box next to online right at the top. That way, OneSearch will only show you the ebooks through the Pierce Libraries databases. And then once you do that, there is a button on the left um, lower corner that says apply filters. Now, before I do that, I'm going to review some of these sources. I can see the first result is an ebook because it says available online. And if you were to click on that title, OneSearch is showing you the record of that source, not the source itself, because you need to open up the database that is hosting this ebook in this example. And this book is available in two databases. First one, ebook central, and then the second one, EBSCOhost ebook collection. It doesn't matter which one you click on, but it will ask you for your student ID number and your month and date of birth. So if I were to click on ebook central, this database by ProQuest would open up. And once again, the username is your student ID number and the passcode is your month and date of birth. So if I was born in June 4th, then my passcode would be 0604, no year. Now this ebook, if I really wanted to use it, I can easily get the link to come back to this book on share link. And this database doesn't have a direct email button, so you would have to copy and paste the link of a particular ebook that you want to read later. But you can also see a cite button, which gives you a pretty good citation for that ebook. By default, it's showing me the MLA style, which is the eighth edition style, but you should always double check these. However, it's good to have something to start with, right? Now, even though this book seems to be about Capote and In Cold Blood, you're probably not gonna read the whole book. So remember that sometimes with books or eBooks, you just need a really good chapter or a really good essay that talks specifically about the topic that you're researching. So don't be afraid to actually open up the eBooks and look at the table of contents and see the chapters or the essays. And with our databases, you can even search within the text of these eBooks for a particular phrase. For example, in this book, I'm gonna search within and I'm going to put in cold blood in quotation marks. And then by clicking enter, this database shows me where exactly they're mentioning in cold blood. Now, because this book is actually about Capote and that novel, in cold blood is everywhere, which is why you see that purple bar in most of these chapters. But it's good to see the chapters, right? Because then we can see, well, maybe I do want to look at the gay subtext of in cold blood, right? Maybe that's the topic of interest. And, and now you have found a good chapter and you really want to use this chapter, and this is going to be one of your sources. And then that's all you really need. Remember that the goal is not really to shop for dozens of sources. The goal is really to find a few sources that really talk about your topic, because in a way you're engaging in a academic conversation with these authors. Now, if we wanted to look at journal articles, once again, we would click on scholarly journals. And that's really all you need. After applying my filters of scholarly journals and articles, I see 200 and something results. So most of these articles should be coming from peer reviewed journals. 
And at this point, it's up to you to scroll down and look at each of these sources to identify which ones are actually about your topic. And you can do this by either looking at the keywords in the title or even the title of the journal 